It's that time of the program. We're already coming down to our final guest. Can't believe it's already this time. Uh, of the Travel Michigan radio program. I'm Dave Lorenz, along with Michelle Banache. And Michelle, uh, who is our final guest of the program? Our final guest is Taylor Ogilvie, who's the general manager at Mount Brighton Ski Resort. And yes, it's the time of the year that we start talking about snow. Mm, that's okay with me. <laughs> uh, Taylor, welcome to the show. And um, you guys have a lot of things happening at Mount Brighton this year. Yeah, absolutely. We have a ton going on right now. Um, You know, we've got renovations going on the mountain, in the lodge, everywhere. Now, Taylor, are you relatively new as the general manager? Did you come in with the Vail uh, Resorts folks when they purchased the property? Have you been there for a while? Yeah, no, that's exactly it. Um, So I worked for I've worked for Vail Resorts since 2001, and. uh, I'm, I'm my last position. I was working in Vail itself, and so I moved here in June and relocated with my family right here to the Brighton area. Oh, great! Well, welcome to Pure Michigan. I, I'm sure you're yeah. gonna love it here, uh, and we're no, gonna love great. the the fact that Vail has uh, purchased Mount Brighton. Vail has this this great uh, reputation of doing a great job out west, and of course now here you are in the the great state of Michigan as an owner of Mount Brighton. And people have been going to Mount Brighton for a long time, but I understand uh, you're putting uh, a lot of investment into this property to uh, to bring it up to um, even nicer standards. Yeah, you know, I mean, the the ski hill had really good bones. It needed some maintenance. It needed some help. Um, so we we are spending ten million dollars, uh, kind of this summer and fall, to you know make it a nicer experience. Uh, we're putting a bunch of new chairlifts in, uh, doing a lot of mechanical work on our existing chairlifts. Um, you know, new snowmaking, new, you name it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it's positioned in a really great place, uh, basically between uh, Detroit and Lansing, just off of I-96. And uh, Mount Brighton has got to be uh, probably the most southern, you know, major, kind of major ski uh, resort in Michigan. Yeah, I mean, we we definitely, we have, a, you know, there's a couple other people around um, who are not too far away. Uh but yeah, I mean, I think we'll have a experience in Southeast Michigan that nobody else has with, you know, a renovated lodge, two restaurants, two bars on site, um, you know, state-of-the-art ski rental, uh, great ski school every day. Um, so we have, we'll have a snowmaking system like nobody else in the Midwest has. So, and that's not just Southeast Michigan, that's everywhere. Well, and that's really important for our area. You know, we have had uh, certainly this, this you know, heritage of a lot of snow in Michigan, but just not as dependable the last uh, five or ten years uh, because we do go in these cycles, and if you have some great snowmaking equipment, that'll make a big deal of difference. Yeah, you know, and I mean, we designed the snowmaking system around the weather here, and it was actually manufactured in Midland, Michigan by SMI, um, so they definitely understand the weather and what we're up against, and the equipment was, you know, made to work in marginal temperatures and high humidity, so, you know, we feel confident that even without the best weather, we can have a great skiing product out here. And I see that one of the other um, additions or expansions or improvements you're making is a new terrain park as well. Yeah, so um, our our terrain park, we it was designed and conduct in conjunction with a company called Snowpark Technologies. Um, they they've done the design for X Games, uh, Burton U.S. Open, a lot of big events, and we brought them in to you know look at our hill and find out you know have them design something that was really cool for us that worked. And so we actually they just finished installing a uh, a huge new feature for us at the. Uh, bottom of our terrain park and you know we got about 30 new rails coming and lots of jumps it'll be a it'll be a fun park is it just my imagination or are more and more i guess i'll call them skiers going to the board rather than uh, skis you know it's actually snowboard stayed pretty flat the last couple of years um it's been sitting around 30 percent participation for about eight years in the u.s um so, you know, I mean, I think that there's a lot of young kids, especially, you know, in this area who enjoy the park, who are snowboarders. But, you know, as an industry, as kind of a worldwide phenomenon, snowboarders sitting at about 30 percent. 
Are you going to be offering um, kind of like an annual pass, like some of the the resorts do, or is um, or is it uh, kind of a, a pay as you go type system at uh, Mount Brighton this season? No, so we have a couple different options. Um, yeah, so we absolutely have a season pass. We have a Mount Brighton only pass. We have also um, a lot of passes through our Epic Pass lineup, which is um, gives you access to all of our resorts. Uh, so you know you could ski here all season, and then for your trip where you go out west your pass works at you know Vail beaver creek keystone breckenridge arapaho basin canyons in utah north star in california heavenly in california and kirkwood in california and then if you get the full-on epic pass it works a bunch of places in europe as well wow i didn't know that well that's so we're in good company yeah (laughs) yeah yeah so i mean there's a lot of uh you know it works at uh 12 la which is the largest ski area in the world, which is in France. And well, uh, you get five days on it if you buy the full Epic Pass. Oh, that's neat. Uh, is skiing seemingly a growing in popularity, or is it also kind of staying flat like uh, like boarding? You know, I would say our participation is shifting. Um, you know, as the baby boomers decide that they're not going to ski as much anymore, um, we're definitely seeing growth in skiing in the younger segments. But you know, as an industry, yeah. I mean, the the baby boomers are a huge part of our industry, and you know that's why we're putting money into the place and doing the terrain parks to you know not replace them, but to make sure that the younger generations are also getting into skiing and snowboarding. And, and talk a little bit. Speaking of that younger generation, you mentioned that you're going to have a great ski school. And talk a little bit about the opportunities that families may have to introduce the kids to skiing or to have a, a whole family experience at the yeah. Resort. So um, children's ski school will start there. Uh, will be available seven days a week with both half day and full day lessons. Uh, that you can start as young as three years old, um, and then to whatever age you want to be. Um, but, you know, I think that's unique in that, you know, in Mount Brighton in the past, there were weekend programs. There, they didn't have a great facility in the building. We've built a dedicated children's ski school area um, so the kids can come here for the day and, you know, be with the same kids, be with their instructor, have lunch together in a really safe, nice environment and learn to ski. Um, we also have, you know, multiple day programs for weekends. Uh, families could do a private lesson, one, two hours, whatever they want, and all learn together. Um, in addition, for adults that just want to try out the sport, um, you know, we have adult group lessons on all weekends of the season. So lots of options as to how to learn to ski. Or if you're already, you know, a decent skier and want to brush up on some skills, that's definitely a possibility as well. Well, that's really great to hear. I, I've been skiing for years, but I didn't start to ski until I was, I think, 25, 27, something like that, and uh, learned from some friends and uh, just by chance took some some lessons later on to really understand what I was supposed to be doing rather than what just felt natural and makes a big deal of difference with uh, classes from the people who really know what they're doing. Yeah, it's it's we we joke in the industry that you should never teach a family member. It never yeah. goes very well. <laughs> well, I think that's probably about right, unless you're a real teacher. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds great. Um, and um, you know, I, I suppose you know, with all the the dollars that you put into the resort um, this uh, this summer and in fall, people are going to be noticing uh, a few things. Uh, just right offhand, what are the things that are most noticeable uh, that you can mention? Um, well, I think, you know, from the moment you get here, just the the way that the lodge looks and when you go inside the lodge, it's a huge difference from what it was like before. Um, you know, the previous lodge kind of hadn't been touched since the 80s in a lot of mm. ways. Parts of it still felt very 60s. And, uh, you know, we've done a huge renovation on the lodge with the look on the outside as well, but certainly inside. Uh, you know, with a full table service restaurant replacing the restaurant that they had, which is called the Bowery, our new restaurant is Ore Creek Mountain Grill. Um, Entirely new space, new bar in there, and then as well a quick surf cafeteria with another bar. uh, Well, you know, it it sounds like you've really really done some great things at Mount Brighton. People should consider heading out there this season, and for more information, just go to mtbrighton.com. Thank you, Taylor, for joining us today, General Manager at Mount Brighton Ski Resort. That's all the time we have for Travel Michigan this week. Hope to have you join us next week right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at Michigan.org.